The rareness of a former politician involving in a heinous crime was not a common incident in the early 19th century, but the case of James Samuel McHugh will remain in American history forever. James Samuel McHugh was born in 1861, a politician who served three terms as mayor of Charlottesville. James Samuel McHugh worked as a municipal court judge, and was a successful attorney before coming into politics. His work in domestic relations and debt collection gave him a lot of enemies, even though he did have some admirers. Shortly before the death of his wife, four days after his final term, James Samuel McHugh had finished his final run as mayor serving three terms as mayor of Charlottesville. James Samuel McHugh was believed to be womanizer and stepped out on his wife, Fanny, often. In midsummer of 1904, a 22-year-old woman named Hattie Marshall came to McHugh to file for divorce from her husband, Lester. Soon she and McHugh who already had a reputation as a ladies' man began an affair. Their affair continued until Friday, September 2nd, when Hattie mailed a long letter to her estranged husband, Lester, in Earliesville, imploring him to come to Charlottesville on Monday, September 5th the day after the upcoming murder. Lester received the letter the next day but did not come on Monday but Tuesday the 6th. Because of these indiscretions, it caused him to have enemies even outside of his workplace. On the evening of September 4, 1904, someone bludgeoned Fanny, the wife of James Samuel McHugh with the baseball bat before strangling and shooting her to dead. Fanny's body was then left in the bathtub in some water on the second floor of their home. James Samuel McHugh's story about the events of that night to the police was that someone attacked him after entering the second floor of their home. He claimed to be knocked unconscious when he noticed someone in the bedroom and reached for his shotgun. When James regained consciousness moments later, he smelled gun smoke and headed back to the first floor to call for help. He pleaded with the operator to get help because he had been attacked and that his wife may have been shot. Then he got through to his brother. When his brother arrived, James told him to find Fanny. Their son was out of the house for a social call while all of this was going on. James's brother heard running water coming from the upstairs bathroom and entered the room, lighting a gas lamp. There, he found Fanny in the tub half filled with water. She had no pulse. By the time the brother returned downstairs, a police officer had arrived. When James heard his brother tell the police officer that Fanny was dead, he dropped to his knees, sobbing. It was a reaction most people wouldn't expect from someone guilty of murdering their wife, or perhaps Sam was a good actor. James Samuel McHugh was taken into custody, and questioned by police officers for the murder of his wife and with no alibi, on the night of the crime, the prosecution against him concluded that James Samuel McHugh and Fanny had gotten into a violent argument on returning home from church, and this fight led to Sam bludgeoning, strangling, and then shooting his wife to death. Some thought this was crazy, knowing that their son could have walked back in at any time and caught him in the act of murder. It was rumored had it that the McHughes didn't have a happy marriage and many family members lacked any surprise over the end of that relationship happening in death. Even their son Willie said that his parents often fought violently, though he had said that they were getting along fine that evening over the dinner table before heading to church, but he was wrong. Loudly claiming his innocence, 
James Samuel McHugh bought an ad in the Daily Progress newspaper offering a $1,000 reward for information leading to the conviction of his wife's killer. He even audaciously hired the Baldwin Detective Agency to investigate, but after one day, the detectives were convinced that McHugh was the killer. They then began working with the Charlottesville police. On September 7th, McHugh was arrested and charged with murder when circumstantial evidence accumulated, including the Baldwin detectives discovering that he and Fanny frequently quarreled. At his November trial, neighbors testified to McHugh's evolving story, and enough evidence was presented to convince the jury. James Samuel McHugh was said to have a later confessed to the murder of his wife and was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. After 26 minutes of deliberation, they found him guilty and sentenced him to hang on February 10, 1905. After his verdict was read, McHugh stated, I shall not be hanged, and I shall not commit suicide. On February 10, 1905, the former mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia, was hanged in the city's jail for the murder of his wife. Fanny a sentence he may have accepted to protect his mistress from taking the rap. He was also hanged with his back to the scattered witnesses, a practice unheard of. The drop was not eight feet, which was standard, but three feet, not enough to break the neck. McHugh was also hanged not with a traditional black hood over his head, but in a full black robe which obscured his entire body. Witnesses noted that the deputy who adjusted the rope paused not once but twice to put his hand on McHugh's shoulder, while he corrected something under McHugh's neck. Spectators also saw him whisper several times into McHugh's ear. After the drop, McHugh supposedly strangled to death. Even though they could not see his face, witnesses claimed he did not struggle, as was typical of those hanged who strangled. After several minutes the body was taken down and hustled away under much secrecy. There was no funeral, and he was supposedly buried at his family home, Brookville, near Afton. It was reported that McHugh was buried so quickly that a life insurance policy would not pay unless the body was disinterred for identification. McHugh's family elected not to do this. Hence his life insurance was never claimed. Thank you for watching Death Row.